Some things are hard to explain. That seems like a simple summary of a lot of topics, like death, murder, competitive frisbee, sex. Now there's a doozy. If I've learned anything in college, it's that college life is a breeding ground for sexual insecurities and confusion. Hey, Peter? Yeah, eight is fine. The horse movie? About the Thai prostitutes? Yeah. Oh, the horse movie. Um, yeah, eight is fine. I could blame my sexual awkwardness on a slew of people, which is what I intend to do. The trouble began right before I hit double digits. It happened to be around the time my older sister got pregnant. She was the first person I asked, presenting the question in the coy form of making babies. Trust me. You don't want it. Her refusal to help, however, only piqued my curiosity. So I turned to my imaginary friend, Pierre de Bonaire, a master of intrigue and espionage. Hmm. Ugh, let's see here. <coughs> we need to uh, survey the evidence and uh, get to the bottom of this mystery. This reminds me of France. Many, many mysteries. The Eiffel Tower, the Louvre. Let's start with your sister. As I was saying, Jim, your sister's pregnancy provides us with one analytical clue that very well may unlock the mystery of this pregnancy. Ah, and you can see I've taken some observations, some evidence. You have your fat sister at the bottom, a couple of cookies, a baby. They are linked. We can see based on Erka's obesity that there is most likely some connection uh, between eating and pregnancy. So, I propose we do a little experiment, collect some empirical data. Ah. Mm. Oh, awesome. Yes. Mm. Salty. Yes, mm. I'm gonna throw it in for something. Mm. Mm. I'm getting, I can, oh, I can taste that. We are close. This is pregnancy. I might be in Perth. After Pierre and I embarked on a chip eating binge that failed to produce any offspring, we found ourselves back at square one. But Pierre had another idea. Okay, now we shall turn to our list of suspects. Your sister's being particularly uncooperative, so we shall move on to your mom. Let's see what she has to say. But she wasn't available, so we tried the next best option. Babies made? We adopted you, we bought you, we sold you, we, uh, 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 we, we took you from the neighbors. I don't know how babies are made. But Pierre and I weren't satisfied with Dad's admission of ignorance. So we pressed further. When, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much, and they've been married for about 10 years, they, they, they get into bed and they, they give each other a special handshake. Bon, 
and shit. I suspected as much. Pleased to meet you. But there was one question that remained. So I turned to a wise source, my brother. Mm, what? What? Oh, uh, how do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Hmm. Well, according to modern genetic theory, say, for instance, that this represents an X chromosome, and this, on the other hand, represents what we call a Y chromosome. Now, if you put one of these together, one of these, you tend to end up with a boy. On the other hand, if you get two of these, it will tend most likely to be a girl. At first I sort of got it, but then things started to get confusing. Now the interesting part is how we get these chromosomes together to begin with. And that usually happens when Papa Knife says to Mama Spoon, let's get it on, baby. And then they make love. They make sweet, sweet love. Oh, oh baby, do it like that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. And sometimes. Oh. Considering the people I turn to to learn about sex, it's not surprising why it can be a sore subject for me. Also, you are right. Boys do have cooties. Projecting my childhood problems onto a French detective isn't exactly a stern example of a healthy upbringing. But if it's any consolation, uncomfortable or not, that didn't stop me from learning about the process of baby making firsthand. What are you doing? I did know you smoked. <clears throat> Is that a problem? Um, you just reminded me of someone I knew. <laughs> <laughs>